Hey folks, it's Brian. It's time for another GTJ build video. This one is number 92. Fuck them shocks. Yeah. Um, so, I'm not sure if these rough country shocks are worn out, but I'm worn out from jumping up and down on the bumper. And if you remember a couple videos back, I started to replace these with some Rancho, aka Monroe. Fancy name for Monroe. Um, and I started to replace them and I realized, hey, you know what? Size matters. Your girlfriend was right. Size matters. Or your boyfriend, depending on who you are. Anyway, hey, so I got the right Rancho shocks in finally. And I'm going to change out the front shocks so they match the back shocks. One of the rough country shocks is shot to hell on the driver's side. I don't think these are the problem. But it isn't going to hurt anything to get rid of the one that's worn out and replace the other one at the same time. The rear been replaced. It still rides like a Jeep. It ain't going to be no F-150. And sure as hell ain't going to be no Chevy. Um, so anyway, we're going to get to it. Now that I've offended everybody who's probably watching this show. Um, so first things first, we need to undo this. And then we need to undo those. So I'm going to get the sockets and wrenches and we're going to get after it. So you will need a 14 millimeter socket up here and then you're going to need something to grab this because it's going to spin when you try to remove that. So something that makes sense for me is an adjustable wrench adjusted to that size. There's a little uh, indentation up there. Once you get it loose, it should be finger tight and full of shit. Greasy. No surprise. It's a Jeep. It used to leak a lot. Alright, so. We'll just get this uh, nut off here. We're going to save these because they may or may not come with replacement hardware. It should have replacement bushings. These are worn the hell out. And it's going to be difficult to get out, so I'll deal with that later. Uh, the lower part 13 millimeter. Let me get that set up and I'll be right back. Okay, so uh, for the purposes of conversation, you're going to need a 13 millimeter. Uh, ratchet. Oh, that seems to be tightening. And about the point that you think you've got it loose is where you will need a box wrench for the other side. No, you will not be able to get this loose with your fingers. At least I'm on this team. Alright, there's one. So 
pull that out. And now we'll do the back one. And you can undo this one with your fingers. All right, so the next thing to do is to compress the shock and just pull it out. That's it. It's really not that difficult. Now, Rough Country is rumored to have pretty crappy shocks. But you know what? That has some recovery, so I don't think this one's bad. Um, but the other one is absolutely bad. It doesn't recover, so it means it's lost its charge. Let's get the new one out. So I am using RS55239s. These are for a two and a half inch uh, lift kit, which is what um, Rough Country advertises it is. Cardboard goes to recycle, dust trap goes to the trash. We'll go ahead and humor it with the sticker. And then it did come with a complete set of hardware, so that's actually pretty nice. bent the fucking piece of metal. That's lovely. I think they put this shit on square, but I guess not. So we'll figure out their sticker's gonna go where I put it and that'll just be good enough. So, uh, one of the differences is this is a tighter, um, it, it's just a tighter shock or it's a thicker shock. So let's go ahead and get all this stuff out. These are much thicker pieces. So let's see if we can figure out where this stuff goes. Does it want to go there? Does it want to go here? Mm -hmm. So, process of elimination says that it goes like this. The bigger piece goes away from the joint. And then um, we're going to get rid of this plastic thing. I'm not going to cut it this time. That way, if I have to send it back, I still have it. So, it'll go like this. And then the other one, it's the narrow pieces that go together and the big pieces that go apart. So let's get under there and put this together. Okay, so putting it back is essentially the reverse of taking it out. Okay. All right. So
So it is in and it's a little tight at the top, but let me get the bushing in before I go to any, any further. Oh, it's a lot tight at the top. So I've got that started, I'm gonna pause there and I'll work on the bottom. <clears throat> All right, so this shouldn't be a huge ordeal, but boy, have I said that before, it been wrong on this Jeep. There's one. Too. All right, so um, I don't fully trust these bolts, so I'm going to add a little bit of a thread lock to them. I'm using blue, which is medium strength. I'll throw that on the other side. these might actually be torque um, these might actually be lock nuts because they're not wanting to go all the way in and that's a good thing although they're slippery now make these tight enough, which is essential torque in my process. It's uh, very closely related to about that tight.
these don't carry any load, so they don't have to be super tight with torque. And this is a good opportunity while I'm under here. Man, it's so nice not to see any leaks under this Jeep. Um, all right, let's do the top. All right, so, where are you gonna put this uh, 14 millimeter wrench in here? Probably plenty right there. Um, except there it seems stuck. going to take this one off and there's a lot more clearance over here so we still got some issues So, pull that off, pull that out, and now it's time to go down underneath and work the magic there. And you can see these are just absolutely flattened. This, this is the shock that's worn out and won't recover. All right, so it's a little bit dark on camera. Of course, the minute I'm filming, all my friends want to fucking text me. Here's one. And let's go for two. Go. This 
gets much harder to do as you get older and you're working on it not on the left. This is still a quick project though. reach that by hand. No sir. with a wrench but a bitch to turn by fingers. All right. There we go. And these push these uh, control arms are shot. But that is not today's project. So, like the other side, you just want to push it up and pull it out. All right. So, it's time for the new one to go in. just a whole lot more uh, spring force in this. they put these in crooked. It's so fucking stupid. It's just asinine for these to be in here crooked like this. The last one I twisted before it went in here. There's just not enough thread sticking through to do that on these.
Well, they might be in the back. Just seems like it wouldn't be that hard to have the bracket go in 90 degrees to the shock and not ship it where it's all cockeyed like this. Piece of shit. Let's see if we can do it with some, with the uh, box wrench. I'm gonna fix this the way I fixed it last time. All right. <sighs> that these are fucking crooked. <clears throat> All right. So I did tighten up so that it wouldn't be too much of an issue. the hardest part about putting these in is uh, fighting with the fucking bolts because the brackets not installed properly.
really wants to be changed. But I think I can get this done. So I think these are actually lock nuts. done down here. So. And we're just going to tighten this until it snugs the, the washers or yeah the bushings. That's enough. All right, that's it. And now for the magic question. I actually think it is better. Um, I don't know, we'll see. Let's take it around the block. That should be fun. All right, so the first question is, how's the fan? It's quieter.
folks, thanks for watching. That's it. It is driving normal.